Whether it's your first time here or you're a regular here at Mr. Super Raz, I just want to thank you for tuning in to the channel. It exists because I, Oz, from the channel Mr. Super Oz, I wrote a 68-page graphic novel called Everlasting Survivors. Volume 1 is called All Day Long. If you follow the link in the description of this video, you can get yourself hats, shirts, posters, all kinds of fun things. But most importantly, you can get the story itself. And the more people that pick up the story, the greater the chances are that there can be continued adventures with these heroes. If you could, give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment. Enjoy. Now it's time to talk about Monday Night Raw. So, 10-21-2002. Uh, we open up the show with the former hardcore hero, Kurt Angle, who demands a rematch with the hardcore. Sport. I was going to say, he's still our Olympic hero. Yes, he's still our hero. <laughs> just, just in a different sense now. Um, Raven, uh, in the classic Darby Allen black, dark out promo situation, says, you know what? Why not? I'll accept the match. But, on the caveat that if I beat you again, you can never again challenge for the hardcore title. And I don't mean you can never challenge for it again as long as I'm champion. I mean you literally can never hold this title again. Ooh, that's uh, that's some strong words right there. Yeah. Especially given the, the fun and work that he put into it. Exactly, exactly. And Raven, knowing that being the master manipulator he is, knows that Kurt wants it back. And also knows that not having that opportunity to ever get it back would crush him more mm. than losing to him. I like it. And, you know, Raven being the sick manipulator that he is, convinces Kurt to accept the match. And so, that match will happen in the future. Cool. Um, Let's see here. Next up, uh, just a little, like, promo from Rob, a little backstage uh, interview with JR. Just like, yeah, Rob Van Dam? Yeah, Van Dam. Could he be in the trainer's room? Because it sounds like he put in some work last night. It might be, it might be checking on him. I mean, it's, it, it's a it's a clip from last night. Oh, okay. So you know how they do, like, the yeah. post-match yes, interview? Yes, absolutely. It's li that's literally what it is. Sounds good. JR comes in and is like, Rob, how you doing? He's like, yeah, you know, I'm still recovering. Um, but I will be back, and I will be better than ever whenever said, said time arrives. Yes, exactly. Um, next up, Triple H is in the back. A lot of promos starting on Raw, so my bad, guys. I apologize. We'll get to the matches soon, I promise. That's all good. Um, you got to talk him into the seats. You got to talk him into the seats. Uh, Triple H complains to Mick about uh, not putting him in the number one contenders match. And uh, Mick tells him, listen, I gave you two opportunities, and you blew them both. <laughs> I don't know what you want me to say. So, listen. If you really wanted to be in the match, you would have won. That, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. You can't be mad at me. He's like, you know what? You know what, Mick? This isn't over. Triple H storms off like a petulant child. Uh, back in the ring, Kurt's still in the ring. Demands a match right now with anyone in Hardcore Vice. So out comes Dream, Dreamer with Steven Richards. Raven not there, still recovering from yeah. the Steel Cage match. Well, and, and being intelligent. Yeah. I was about to say, why, why waste your time and energy on a match you... Don't have to wrestle. Yes. Um, so. Um, like, you have underlings for a reason. Yeah, I was about to say. That's the whole, whole reason they exist. Um, fun little match between Dreamer and uh, and Kurt. Uh, but ultimately wraps up in Kurt slapping on an ankle lock. Extra aggressive, extra angry mm -hmm. due to not being the hardcore champion anymore. So Dreamer, of course, before he loses his ankle, decides to go ahead and just tap on out. Live to fight another day. Um, let's see. Uh, next up, we have uh, Jazz coming out saying, listen, you've been picking on, no offense to your past competition, but they're not on my level. They're right. not me. Yeah. So how about this? How about in two weeks, you stop running from me, and me and you handle some business. I've been undefeated since you've won that title. You've been undefeated since you've won that title. It's time that we get a clash of the juggernauts on Monday Night Raw. So in two weeks... It'll be Jazz versus Victoria for the women's championship. Cool. Uh, Victoria comes That's out and says. That's not in this episode, is it? No. Okay, then nope, that'll be the next episode. I thought so. Felt yeah. right. Yep, felt right. 
Um, but yeah, of course, Victoria comes out and says, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. We're, we're good. <laughs> and then Mick says, oh, no, 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 no. That, uh, she actually brought up some great points. We, we are going to do that. Yeah, that wasn't a question. That was yeah, a statement. That, that, that was, no, she already told me that she wanted to do this. And I was like, yeah, that's great. So that'll be happening. Um, and then since Mick is already out, he goes ahead and walks on down the ring because we got a contract signing. So uh, Mick says this will be the uh, contract signing to make officially number one contendership match. That'll be happening on let's see, next week's war. So, uh, Mick obviously welcomes Shawn Michaels, Christian, and a John Cena who is debuting his Doctor of Thugonomics gimmick. Yes, yes. So we're officially on the the word life, I ba- love it. basic Thugonomics. I'm a big fan. And and John christens this new development by. Showing his new tweenerish side, new mm-hmm. not fully heel, not fully baby face. Yeah. And the first thing he does is diss both Shawn Michaels and Shawn uh, Christian. Of course, a rap. yeah, because that's that's classic Cena. You and got it in you? No, nah, not on this one. Okay, don't that's, worry. That's cool. That's cool. I was about to say. Yeah, I would. I, 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 I will. I will spit a bar or two. I would not have had it myself, so yeah. I just thought I'd ask. I, I was about to say. Yeah, I was thinking. I'm just going to save the actual rouse for, like, main event. That's cool. Like, That's cool. Ain't nothing wrong with so it. So, if he's going for, like, a world title, I'll, I'll come up with a rap. Because he was very, he was very creative. Yeah. Um, I, 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 no knock. I like Max Caster. Indeed. But I feel like Max Caster is not, not as creative as John Cena was. Yeah. I feel like the thing with Max, though, is, like, he has to be really, really, really careful since he got in trouble that one time. Sure. Yeah. And again, I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean to him. I yeah. just think that... It, it also helps that Cena didn't more, first. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It does help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, but yeah, I, I agree. They're they're very different in their approach, and I do think it comes down to because it's like, so I follow Max Caster's like YouTube channel. Sure, I didn't and, know he had one. Yeah, he did. It's called a uh, Shook Crew. If, okay, if you want to go check it out. But and and in there he has like all kinds of music videos, and usually whenever he has like something going on in AEW. It's when he like drops like a rap video and a diss track. Sometimes it makes it on TV. Sometimes it just doesn't. Yeah, I saw one with uh, or not with, but about Jeff Jarrett. Yeah, that was probably the last one that was on TV, so, and that was that was funny. Yeah, but um, but yeah, so like I feel like he's more creative on there because he can just say. Of course, yeah, it's not the it's not the it's not the same. Yeah, it's not as limiting as being on live national television yeah. and TBS saying no, we don't want that. Yes, but um, yeah, so. After after seeing, but I like that he him. debuted. Yes, in this character. That's exactly. good. Exactly. Yeah, to me, it's one of one of his best characters. Yeah, this is saying that as the and, I, I grew up with Fruity Pebbles, John. And the, so. the funny thing is that he's a million miles away from it now. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I agree. I think it was some of his best work was yeah. then. Yeah, that, that's because he was trying really hard not to get fired. Exactly. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's just uh, so mixed. Like, wow, that was. Unexpected. I didn't, <laughs> didn't didn't see that coming from me, John. But I like the energy. I like the energy, and we're gonna channel all that aggression into this match next week. So, Banks about to have everyone sign the contract when Triple H music hits, and Triple H comes out and says, "You know what, Mick? I, I've been doing this all wrong. <laughs> this, this, this is my fault for trying to do things the right way. I was trying to give you an opportunity to do the right thing, but since you don't want to do the right thing, I went ahead and went over your head." Woo! Yes, exactly. <laughs> Out comes Rick bum, Blair. Bum, bum. Yep. And, and and Rick coming out with new pieces of paper. Yes. New new contracts. I bet this one has Triple H's name on it. It sure does. How'd you know, Watts? <laughs> AEW president Rick Flair comes out uh, with a new contract for a fatal four way match. That already has Flair's seal, seal of approval yes. signature. Yeah, I bet Triple H's name's already on there yep. too. Like he's he's they did this stuff. They they're ready. Yep. Yep. Uh, oh, Rick can says, I? Can I? Uh, yeah. I need to tease one thing after you're done with okay. your Rick promo. Yeah, when I'm done. Yeah, yeah. sure. So like when I'm done with the segment or when I'm done with the promo. This whenever is Rick is done talking, show. because it ends the show. Yeah. Well, whenever Rick's done talking, I have one thing to put in his mouth. Okay, got it. Thanks. All right, so Rick. Says Triple H, uh, already signed his name. Go ahead, you three gentlemen can uh, sign here, here, and here. And uh, we'll go ahead and make that triple threat match. Of, sorry, not triple threat. Fatal four way match official. Awesome. Yep. Now, yeah, what's up? Rick Flair finishes this out by saying, Mick, 
this is nothing personal. I'm not against you. Uh, I will be showing up on this coming SmackDown because I am the president of Alpha Entertainment Worldwide, mm -hmm. and I have a big announcement uh, that will will be coming out this on this SmackDown. So it's nothing personal. I'm just I'm doing business. Because I, I legitimately did have him booked on SmackDown, so sweet. So, so it worked just worked out, out perfectly. Worked out, sweet. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I love when plans come together. Um, but of course, Triple H is standing there while Rick's talking and everyone's signing the new contract, and he's just gloating, telling him to suck it <laughs> and whatnot. Um, so of course, Cena, Michaels, and Christian take exception to this. Mm -hmm. uh, so Sean hits sweet chin music on Triple H. Christian nails a kill switch, and then Cena. Picks uh, Triple H up for the FU, newly christened mm -hmm. FU. It actually has a name now, and of course puts Triple H to a table because you know this is the contract sign. Yes, that's the only way to close out a contract sign. <laughs> yep. It and then uh, of course really. at the top of the ramp, the man that everyone's buying to be, Brock Lesnar, standing there with his undisputed world championship with ball hand, <laughs> and just like, all right, well, we see what the future's looking like. Absolutely. But uh, that is the show. Awesome.